So first of all, allow me to, to thank you for this uh, very kind invitation and to be part of this uh, uh, conference. My, my talk uh, is going to focus uh, on uh, the uh, Sogdians uh, in China. And uh, I, I will start showing you some uh, uh, pretty well-known, uh, at least among uh, experts, uh, uh, funerary monuments. And uh, I will finish uh, with some uh, uh, very new archaeological findings. Yeah. <clears throat> In this uh, map, uh, very quickly, I highlight uh, the, the regions of China and in uh, neighboring countries where we have uh, evidence uh, of uh, the presence of Sogdians, uh, both uh, from the point of view of archaeological uh, remains uh, or uh, textual uh, findings in Sogdian language. In the next slide, there should be, yeah, this is a list of uh, the uh, so-called uh, Sino-Sogdian monuments, this group uh, of funerary monuments uh, uh, started to be called like this. Some scholars decided to give this uh, very interesting name. As you know, the Sogdians were uh, uh, Iranian-speaking people, Eastern Iranian. Uh, culturally, they um, belong to the um, to the world uh, of uh, Zoroastrian religion. Zoroastrian religion is uh, a conventional name. Uh, actually, uh, the, the, the form of Zoroastrianism of the Sogdians was definitely different than the one uh, in Persia or in other parts of Central Asia. And uh, the Chinese knew this uh, difference, and in fact, they reported in their written sources this list uh, that I'm showing in this slide is incomplete uh, because uh, I did not include the very last uh, monument uh, of this group. Very often we have epitaphs uh, in Chinese, in Middle Chinese, uh, uh, sorry. Sometimes we have a bilingual epitaph, uh, Middle Chinese and uh, Sogdian language. So we know the name of these people, like in the case uh, of this uh, a person whose name was Kang Ye. So Kang is definitely the surname of Sogdians coming from Samarkand. It's very interesting because uh, in this case, uh, we have uh, a funerary bed, a funerary couch, and the, the dead, uh, the body, is actually there. Um, usually, the Sogdians who lived and died in China just uh, organize uh, the funeral according to Chinese uh, habits of that period, uh, North China. But uh, there is nobody, there is no corpse, because uh, if they are Zoroastrian, they cannot bury the dead. But in this case, we have so we have uh, the uh, funerary monument of uh, a very sinicized uh, Sogdian person. Next slide, please. And this is the grave uh, belong to Shijun, another Sogdian. And in this case, next slide, please, we have also the epitaph in two languages, Chinese Sogdian. So extremely interesting because we have the career of this person who was a Sapao. In this case, as you can see in this sketch, we don't have a funerary couch, but something improperly called sarcophagus. Actually. As you see, it's a, a, it's a stone house. This is the correct name of this kind of monument. Next slide, please. It's a shape as a house, as you can see. And uh, you can see the epitaph, Chinese and Sogdian. So, Extremely important uh, monument because uh, it's uh, excavated and uh, we have uh, the bilingual epitaph. So every side is uh, embellished with uh, um, very interesting motifs, very interesting funerary scenes. 
sometimes including the presence of Sogdian deities. I would like to call your attention on uh, uh, the representation of uh, a Sogdian deity. Yes, uh, this one. So the arrow is pointing at uh, a representation of uh, a Sogdian deity uh, represented with a trident uh, in one of his uh, hands uh, and uh, he's sitting on uh, a kind of throne shaped like uh, three bulls. So this is the typical iconography of Shiva in India. We have many Indian elements uh, here. But uh, next slide, please. Uh, we know this deity pretty well uh, because in Sogdian uh, paintings, uh, in Sogdiana motherland, we have uh, this image uh, along with uh, an inscription on uh, the leg uh, saying his name, which is Veshparkar. Next slide, please. And uh, Vesh, the first part of his name uh, is connected with Vayu in Avesta, the holy book uh, of Zoroastrians. And uh, Vayu is the god of wind. This is the painting from uh, Penjikent. It's uh, a Sogdian uh, site now in uh, Tajikistan. But the painting was found during the Soviet period and is now in a Hermitage. So very important evidence to establish firmly the name of this god. On his leg is written Veshparkar. Next slide, please. We continue with uh, some other Sinosogdian funerary monuments. And this one, uh, it's uh, in part uh, preserved uh, in um, in the US, other parts uh, are in Germany and uh, in uh, in France. Next slide, please. In this case, we have uh, a funerary couch. This is the sketch. You see, it's composed uh, by different parts uh, and usually we have uh, a stone base. Next slide, please. Every part uh, of this monument present uh, very interesting decoration and uh, even uh, decorative motifs uh, that we could uh, consider typically Iranian, like the so-called pearl roundels uh, with uh, some uh, uh, motifs uh, inside. And most uh, of this uh, um, of these uh, monuments I'm showing you now were not uh, excavated scientifically. So we are talking about uh, monuments which belong to Iranian speaking people who lived in China and uh, uh, concentrate uh, very different artistic tradition. So there is a lot of Indian uh, cultural milieu here. This is uh, a portion of uh, an unexcavated uh, Sinosogdian monument, which is now part of a private collection. But fortunately, the epitaph in Chinese was found uh, and it's now in the hands of a private collector. It's very interesting, you know, most of this uh, material is illegally excavated, but uh, we still have some color, some pigmentation on this uh, monument. And we have definitely elements uh, which are connected with Sogdians, uh, with uh, the, the religion of these people. And the name itself, Anpei, An is pointing at his, his origin in Bukhara, which is now in Uzbekistan, uh, in, uh, in Sogdiana, in historical Sogdiana motherland. The other parts uh, of the funerary bed, uh, unfortunately, they have never been uh, published completely. But uh, uh, some of these uh, uh, scenes represented are quite uh, standard. So, so Sino-Sogdian monuments present uh, standard uh, uh, images, but each one is a unique piece, which is uh, further uh, interesting. This Ampei um, funerary uh, panels uh, are not uh, well published. So some of these pictures are very dark. I don't have better images. 
You see, these people uh, in Chinese sources, uh, Sogdians, uh, were considered to be very fond of wine, very fond of music and dance. And this is exactly what we have on the slide uh, on the left. On the right, uh, probably we have uh, these uh, giant uh, figures uh, drinking. And uh, it's very difficult to say if they are people or, I mean, human beings or uh, deities. It's another unexcavated uh, Sinosogdian funerary monument. And in this case, we do, do not have the epitaph. Again, we have this uh, stone house. Very interesting. The images of the uh, guardians on each side of uh, the, the door of a stone house present uh, unique characteristics. In this case, the decoration of the stone house all around inside we don't have any decoration, are like uh, uh, graffiti, not real carvings. Next slide, please. It's much easier to um, study these uh, decorations on sketches, on reproductions uh, like this. There is quite often a very strict division between uh, uh, men and women. And uh, we identify women because of their garments, which are usually very typically Chinese. So men are very strongly characterized with uh, uh, foreign elements, like uh, exaggeration of a nose, mustache, beard, curly hair, and uh, extravagant uh, uh, garments, weapons, and accessories. Again, uh, very strict division, women on one side, men on the other side, music, dance. The main uh, couple in the middle is receiving a kind of homage by priest, uh, presumably, presenting this uh, kind of uh, fire altar. Fire was a very important element, uh, but not only fire, even water, earth, in, uh, in uh, the pre-Islamic religion of this uh, Central Asian people. The most recent um, finding, actually, um, the Shelby White and Leo Levi collection in New York City restituted to China this very interesting uh, stone basis, again, with uh, these uh, uh, motives, uh, most likely belonging to a Sinosogdian monument. We have just the base, no epitaph, no other information, but very strong elements telling us that even in this case, we can include this uh, um, base into the group of Sinosogdian monuments. We have two stone bases from the Shelby White Leon Levi collection, Next, please. So these are some details uh, of the previous one, but I would like to show you also the, the second, and then I would like to pass uh, to the newest uh, Sinosogdian monument. So this is the second one, which uh, was uh, uh, just given by the Americans. Next uh, slide, please. We have... Uh, a very interesting, uh, complete uh, uh, tomb, which unfortunately was not uh, um, archaeologically excavated. It was a, a salvage uh, excavation. Next slide, please. And uh, it is now in uh, in a Chinese museum. In the, in the repository. And we do have the epitaph. Next slide. Here we are. We know the name of the dead. His name was Chu Qing. So Chu is uh, the, the name of the family who ruled in Turfan for approximately 100 years before the coming of the Chinese, before the Tang conquest. 
So we know that uh, ethic and ethic and ethnically, this uh, Chu Ching was not uh, a Sogdian, but uh, his uh, funerary culture definitely show very interesting elements, which uh, allow us to include uh, also this monument uh, into the group of Sino-Sogdian uh, uh, funerary monuments. So next slide, please. I would like to call your attention on very specific elements which uh, can tell us exactly why we think uh, this uh, monument uh, could be included uh, in uh, in this group. Because uh, both uh, in Xinjiang and in other parts of North China, the Sogdian presence uh, was uh, massive. And in fact, uh, we have these uh, musicians and uh, the guardians on each side with these uh, floating ribbons uh, that we have uh, typically attached to the crowns uh, of the Persian kings of Sasanian dynasty and even on, uh, on Sogdian uh, crowns. And in the next slide, please, and then I conclude, I would like to call your attention on another very specific element, which is again on the crown of the uh, guardians, these uh, colossal figures which uh, are standing on uh, each side and they are ideally fighting with uh, uh, dwarfish figures like uh, demons with a small uh, size. But what is interesting, again, we have these ribbons and a crown which is composed by wings and uh, this uh, um, probably uh, elements reproducing the luminaries uh, like the sun, stars, there is a crescent uh, if you look uh, carefully. So even if uh, the name of this person is definitely not Sogdian, he had very important connections with the Sogdians in China. In fact, according to the epitaph, he was uh, a military officer he worked for the uh, Peiqi dynasty, the Northern Qi, and we know very well that the Northern Qi uh, had very important connection with the Sogdians. This is the reason why we think that uh, once more we have very important uh, Iranian connections. And again, the name Sino-Sogdian is very appropriate for this kind of funerary monuments.